I'm washing my hands so frequently these days that after a few washes, my, my fingers start to get real, real wrinkly, which is a very unintended side effect. But yeah. So a few days ago, I was talking to my girlfriend and she showed me a picture of foie gras. And then it came up to me, I remembered that when I was transiting into France airport last year, I bought this. This is canned foie gras. So this foie gras is duck liver. I think foie gras has got a bad rep in the past. I'm currently also having a bad rep, mostly due to the practices of how they actually get this. They basically silo like a stick into the duck and then they feed it a lot of like things. Like, let's Google it up. Like, I'll leave some links for that. But yeah, it has gained a bad rep in that sense. But up to that point in time, I have not tried foie gras at all. So I bought this can, I think so for about, it was 25 euros. Like I was just curious about it. I haven't tried it before. And then like I was, I was, I had a few hours to spare in transit in France. So I decided to just walk around duty free. And then I found this. So I decided to buy it out. So I haven't, I, th I, guess I don't know why I just forgot about this. It's, today I'm going to be trying this out. Um, actually, when I got this last year, I did talk to one of my friends who he frequently trans uh, he frequently travels to France. So I asked him about how do you eat this. He's also a chef. He said that there was two ways. One is just to eat it as is raw, and the second one is to just put it on bread. So I'm going to try that out, eating it raw and eating on bread. This one is, let's see here. So this is Blanc de Foie Gras. So as you can see here, this is the second, this is the lowest here. This is like three stars. Like I don't know what this grading means. So, but yeah. So it says Blanc of Goose Foie Gras. Ingredients, goose liver, water, salt, sugar, spices, antioxidant, and preservative. Okay, this is a weird can design. So it's like, open to the side here. Just gonna pull it out. Got myself a pair of pliers here. I don't know why this is so hard to open. This thing is really hard to open. Okay, I just cut off the tab here. Okay, now I'm like, I need to figure out how to open this can. Let me try a can opener. Okay, I've managed to open the packaging. Turns out that this here is not the way to open it. It's supposed to open it with a can opener. So I bet on that I haven't opened one of these and there's this has no instructions at all. So yeah, this pliers was a bit overkill, but right now on my, if you see here, the liquid came out. So I don't know, this feels like oil. Let me get a spoon here. There's this piece on the top here. I don't know what it is. This is a very intricately packed. So on the top, it comes with this metal plate. I don't know. Tastes good. Tastes like oil. Okay, I got two slices of it here out. So yeah. I think the purpose of this plate is just really to reinforce that because this duck liver is very, very like I, I, I cut the side of it here with my fingers. It is very, very delicate. So that serves as that. So I'm gonna slide it out. In terms of how it feels like, it feels very, very soft. For the first time doing it. Okay, got two pieces. There's two metal pieces. Definitely a very interesting experience of taking it out. They should have, have some instructions on how to do it. So I got myself a butter knife here, so I'm gonna just slice it. I read online previously that you're not supposed to use a big knife to take it out because it's super delicate and super soft. So this is what it looks like. Let me give it a taste test here, just a quick taste. There is some oil around it, I don't know. Maybe it's for lubrication and maybe for stabilization in terms of this is supposed to be on a can and it's supposed to be shelf stable for up to two years. So I assume that the oil does some kind of like things to make it last that long, but I'm going to try it out right now. It's a very dense kind of like, definitely very organ meat like. Very dense and the seasoning they put into it, I don't know what. 
yeah, whatever seasoning that they put into it, spi the spices and sugar, it is very, very, very intense, but it's super delicious. I kind of dig it. It is, I can see why people like it. The taste of it, initially when I, when I took it out of the can, the liquid that the oil that came out and the smell reminded me of luncheon meat or any kind of like, like spam or like any kind of like canned meat. The smell really tastes like that. In terms of if, you, if you've eaten like any kind of like chicken liver, it is exactly the same thing, but like less crumbly I would feel. Chicken liver is more crumb, crumbly usually, but this foie gras is very smooth, very, very smooth. Very nice and very delicious. Now this is just the three star version. I wonder what the five star, the foie gras and tier. I wonder what that tastes like. Maybe it tastes even better. One day I'll try it out. I can see uh, this required, this is a very strong flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and toast some bread. I have some frozen bread here that I have. Just gonna put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds just to get it steam out. So this is what the, my countertop looks like. Very messy, as you can see the liquid here. And this is, I think so, it's oil of some sort to stabilize it. The can kind of butchered it like. Very interesting can design. No instructions, no anything. The shape of it is the size of the can. So it cans like that. The shape of it is the size of the can. So like, as you can see, you need to be really precise in cutting it in order to fully take it out. All right, my bread is fully toasted here. So this is some microwave oven, um, microwave oven bread here. I just sliced it up to a small size here. I'm gonna put this piece of foie gras here. The top, it's gonna give it a taste. Yeah, it definitely tastes better with some bread on it. Eating one, one, or, one or two pieces is fine, but like, or eating this whole like slice here, I think that would have been like a little bit too strong. But bread here, it's fine. So yeah, reminding me of this foie gras that I bought in France really also reminded me my first Airbus 380 experience with Air France. So I sat from last year, I went on this, I was transiting in France, to Dubai and my flight from Atlanta to um, Paris Charles de Gaulle Airport, CDG Airport was on the A380, so it's the Airbus A380. Like the reason I'm bringing it up is because recently um, Air France announced that they are fully retiring um, their fleet of 10 Airbus A380 planes ahead of schedule. I think so they were supposed to, to retire it periodically or like in stages um, in, within two years, two to three years but it's sped up due to the COVID-19 pandemic that we are having right now. So I was thinking about that and like, well, well, well this, this, like seeing this reminded me of sitting in that Airbus A3. That's my, that was actually my first time sitting on the Airbus A3. I've always wanted to sit that, but like I've never really got the chance to do that. And give me a sec, let me bring something in here. So for people who don't know, this is the Airbus A380. It's the largest commercial airliner available out right now. This particular model here is um, for the Emirates Airbus A380 for the Expo 2021. So this is a four engine plane. And I was sitting at, the interesting thing about the Air France one was that both, in both times I was sitting near the wing and it really shocked me because um, it's my first time sitting on it and like one thing I w wasn't very apparent is that when the airplane, the H380 was on the ground, I was sitting near the wing. So I was sitting on the left side of the plane here and the wing was tilted towards because the wingspan is so big and super huge that I was sitting on the bottom deck and I was sitting just on the center of the um, center of the wing here. I could not see outside. Like literally the wing was like of covering whatever I can see. I, 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 I would assume that if I was sitting on the second deck, upper deck, I would see outside, but um, only until the plane started gaining like, um, gaining altitude that the wings started flapping down. So that was a very interesting thing to see there. But yeah, the H380 was an interesting plane sitting on it. Like the journey of sitting on it was one thing, like seats on Air France and the in-flight entertainment 
wasn't really the best. Yeah, I was kind of not very premium compared to what you see in the A380 on like Etihad or like Emirates where they have like suites or like super nice, super modern features. When I was flying back from Paris to Atlanta, the in-flight entertainment system was completely like kapunked. They did not have, the system was basically not loading. Good thing that I thought ahead because when I was flying from Atlanta to Paris, I knew that the in-flight entertainment wasn't very good. So when I was flying back to the US, I actually downloaded movies on Netflix to watch. So I didn't have to access the in-flight entertainment system, which was basically broken. But yeah, that was an interesting experience. Also, hopefully in the future, one thing I like to do is just to do like video reviews of, or kind of vlogs on the plane, talking about planes, because one thing that I like to talk about and haven't talked about much is really um, finance, personal finance, credit cards, and aviation. I've talked a lot about food and then like restaurants and like eating and like cooking a lot. Those things I, I, I do in this channel a lot. I think in this, this COVID-19 pandemic, it really helped me to accelerate those topics to be talked on this channel. But things like aviation and like traveling and like, you know, going to restaurants really, it's really overshadowed in this time where I'm, I'm stuck staying at home. But hopefully in the near future, I'll be talking about credit cards and personal finance more on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, also I recently heard that Boeing is also stopping production of their 747 program after about 50 years right now. And same goes for the Airbus 380. I think the last one is scheduled to be rolled out of the manufacturing plant for NA. So that is the last Airbus A380 that's going to be produced. So a lot of airlines are phasing out the A380 in light for lighter planes like the 787 and the Airbus 350, the A350. Those are more smaller and narrower planes. That, you know, it's more fuel efficient because they're modern and they have a modern design compared to the 747 and even the A380 here, which is like, was miles ahead of like in terms of technology when it came out. Yeah, I think now we're moving forward towards more narrow and more efficient, like point to point rather than hub, the hub and spoke kind of like a model in terms of flying. I think I'm having too much, I'm talking too much about planes here. Like hopefully this don't bore you out. So yeah, that's like a quick story of my, my A380's experience. I hopefully in the future, I'll, I'll, I do want to try out other Airbus A380 um, flight from other carriers. Yeah, that was my first and last time trying out Air France A380. Yeah. So yeah, moving back to Foigra. Interesting thing. Not something that I would eat every day, but like it's good to try it out. And like I'm finally eating this thing that I bought a year ago. All right. Quick little update here, I actually went ahead, the second piece, I went and grilled it on each side. I'm try it out right now. It's two things the same, but I feel that having toasted bread, having a little bit of toasted, it feels great, it tastes better. It was definitely hard to try to fry it. It was very, very soft and fragile. So yeah. Ooh. It's good.